Since 1986, Congress has passed over 230 new or expanded penalties for drug and criminal offenses in this United States. 230 new penalties. And these penalties range from an automatic five years in jail for any person caught with a, uh, with a, with a rock of uh, crack cocaine, a piece of crack cocaine as small as a quarter. I don't have a quarter with me, but if you visualize what one looks like, yeah, I do have a quarter. If you have a piece of crack cocaine, no bigger than this quarter that I'm holding in my hand, one quarter of one dollar, we passed a law through the leadership of Senator Thurman and myself and others, a law that says, if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. You get no probation. You get nothing other than five years in jail. Judge doesn't have a choice. Now, the fact of the matter is, we've gone from there all the way up to saying, under the leadership of Senator Thurman, and I'd like to suggest that I take some small credit for it, Kind of, kind of interesting he said that, you know, considering uh, the recent clips that have come out of one of his sons. Very, very interessante, if I do say so myself, right? Very interesting, because I'm sure there was more than just a quarter-sized amount there. No jail time either. Interesting. Kind of funny how that works. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm not saying too much. I'm just, you know, I'm just, just talking to myself a little bit here. Just talking to myself. <laughs> myself as well, and others, the presiding officer, that there is now a death penalty. And we passed it a couple years ago. If you are a major drug dealer involved in the trafficking of drugs and murder results in, in your activities, you go to death and a number of other severe penalties. We changed the law so that if you are arrested and you are a drug dealer, under our forfeiture statutes, you can, the government can, take everything you own, everything from your car to your house, your bank account, not Jeez. merely what they confiscate in terms of the dollars from the transaction that you just got caught engaging in. They can take everything. We have laws in the last several years where we don't allow judges' discretion to sentence people. Flat time sentencing. Oh. You get caught, you go to jail. Well, all of these tools have been at the president's disposal for the last hundred weeks and more. Now, if America's crime problem is worse than it ever was, it's not because the Congress has failed to give the president the tools. It's done its part, but rather because the administration has failed to use the power given to it by the Congress over the last five years, and in particular the last hundred weeks, to bring this epidemic under control. Well, the facts are glaring how bad things are. 200 days ago, Congress enacted a life in prison for major drug dealers. Yet in the past three years, the president has obtained this penalty for only one for only, on average, excuse me, for only, on average, four drug dealers in the entire country each year. If you live here in Washington, you pick up the paper daily. As a matter of fact, the papers are stopped, stopped doing it because it's, people are tired of seeing it. Major drug dealers engaged in turf wars, people getting shot on street corners, murder rate phenomenally high. So we said, 43 years ago, Put those people in jail for life, no, pro no probation, no parole. And in certain circumstances, they kill someone, put them to death. And guess what? Out of all those crimes you read about, out of all of the outrageous actions, this administration on average the last three years has gotten for, on an average, four persons per year. Four, count them, four per year. Think about it. We have about two million people who have been using cocaine weekly in this country. Oh. 
<laughs> Two million, eh? I know who one of them is. I know who one person on that list is. <laughs> they ain't in jail either. And there's video evidence of them doing it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, share, comment, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Watch until the very end, too. All right? Over the past half a year. I mean, over the past uh, half decade. But over the past three years, the administration has used its power to send drug dealers to jail for life only once every three months. The Congress is not tough on crime. 1,000 days ago, Mr. President, Congress gave the president the power to seek the death penalty against drug kingpins who murder. But in the past 1,000 days, this president, during the period of bloodshed and mayhem of which the president has spoken, the president has obtained the death penalty for only one person. One. Congress is not tough. Congress passed the law and said, Mr. President, find these people when you get them, when the Justice Department has them, and they've murdered somebody, put them to death. That's what we said. You have the power. 1,000 days ago, that was given. One. One time has the vaulted Justice Department under the leadership of Mr. Thornburg, who beats up the Congress all the time, one time have they obtained a death penalty. Now look, maybe there's reasons why they can't. Maybe it's hard to make a case. Maybe there's a whole rationale for why. But I find it, quite frankly, preposterous that this president stands up and says, this Congress is not tough on crime after we've given them all this power. And just to take two examples, he's only four times a year put someone in prison for life and only once gotten the death penalty. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of funny how he's trying to be so tough on crime here, but now he's super soft. I mean, all the Democrats are really, really soft on crime, right? We see it all the time. I mean, just, just look at some of these cities that are run by Democrats. I mean, they're riddled with crime. Riddled with crime. <laughs> I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. And his own son. His own son. A little slap on the wrist. Huh? It's okay, Hunter. It's okay. It's okay, even though there are some other folks that, you know, allegedly did some, uh, uh, you know, similar things or same things as you, and we gave them, you know, a couple years, and Uncle Trump had to pardon them, allegedly, of course, allegedly. <laughs> oh, man, goodness gracious, you can't, you can't write this script. 23,500 murders, 2,200,000 people, cocaine addicts, 5.7 million felonies a year, one death penalty, four times a year life imprisonment, And the Congress is not tough on crime. Mr. President, this quarter, remember I told you before, we passed a law, bipartisan. We said crack cocaine is such a bad deal that if you find someone with this much of it, a quarter's worth, not in value, in size, five years in jail, well, guess what? If the Justice Department in New York City, the U.S. Attorney, arrests you with that much, the police arrest you, and they take you to the Justice Department, and you only have that much, 
Guess what the Justice Department, Mr. Thornburg, says? We're not going to prosecute you. You have to have 10 times that much for us to prosecute you in New York City. Whose judgment is that? The Congress or the President? And guess what? If you're in Miami and you get picked up with this much cocaine, crack cocaine, they say, we're not going to put you in jail for five years. And you say, well, we, we caught him with 10 times this much. They say, ah, nah, we're still not going to do anything. We're not going to prosecute you. You have to have 100 times the minimum amount required. Congress said, put him in jail for five years if they have this much. The president said, and he has his own reasons for saying it, and they may be good ones. <clears throat> But he says, no, not unless you have 100 times this much. Are we going to even prosecute you? I ask you, Mr. President, who's not tough on crime? The Congress? The Constitution says we pass the laws. The president enforces the laws. We don't have a vigilante posse up here, Mr. President. We can't start holding court here. We can't prosecute people from here. We can't, in the Congress, say, arrest him or her or him, bring them into this chamber. We have a law that says you go to jail for five years, no probation, no parole. If you have this much, they had this much. The jury finds they have this much. Lock them up and put them in our prison. Mm. Quite interesting you're saying that, Joe. Now, that clip was from uh, June 21st, 1991. Fast forward to today, and you will find Joe's son on camera, mind you, on camera, with that cocaine, well, crack, okay, and from the clip that I've seen, it looked like more than a quarter-sized amount. So my question to you, Joe, would be why isn't your son in jail for a minimum of five years? Because that's what you were pushing for. I'm, I'm just asking. I'm just asking because if, if fair is fair and you believe in equal justice, then your own son would be in jail for five years minimum. Isn't that what he said? Five years if you're caught with a quarter-sized amount? Well, Hunter's on camera. For everybody to see. And now you got that Kukayana, uh being found in the White House too? All these boys out there playing with their nose. I mean, it's crazy. I, goodness gracious. <laughs> To be so allegedly tough on crime, it doesn't seem like he's too tough on crime when it comes to his own family and his own administration. Seems like a bit of hypocrisy going on here. And then for them to say that they have no clue who it is or whose it was. Now, I've never been to the White House personally, but I would just assume, I think it would be a safe assumption to uh, say that, I, you know, they've got tons of cameras. I'm sure there's some, you know, uh, technology built into the White House that would, you know, let them know of who's coming in and who's leaving, who's in or around the White House. There's spotters, I'm sure, on the roof of the White House at all times, people on the grounds, right, security, so that nobody can breach the perimeter that isn't supposed to breach the perimeter, I would assume there's all type of security measures in and around the White House. So to tell me that you have no clue who it was, I'm just going to call BS. I'm going to call BS. I assume there's cameras inside of the White House just as much as there are outside. I would assume. 
Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. If anybody's ever been to the White House, let me know. When Uncle Trump gets back into the White House, I will definitely, definitely try to make a visit there. Okay? <laughs> For sure. For sure. Meeting Donald Trump in the White House will be a, a oh man, that, that'd be one hell of a video. <whistles> that'd be one crazy good video right there. Yeah, goals, goals, all right? <laughs> Trump take Trump uh take take it back to White House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video with Uncle Trump in the White House. Got to make it happen. Got to make it happen. Absolutely. Anyway, um yeah, I, I just I just find it quite interesting. You got the hunter situation. Slap on the wrist. Then you got the cocaine situation. I don't know who it is. Really? Really? Seems like Joe's all talk. Rules for thee. No rules for me. That's the Democrat way for you. Send us to all your Democrat friends and um, ask them honestly how they feel about this. And for any Democrats watching, how do you feel about this? Because we all know if this was Uncle Trump, if this was Uncle Trump that had stood up here and said all of this, and it was his son that was caught on camera, caught on camera with them rocks, with them rocks, it would be a totally different story. We all know how the mainstream media would have been airing that 24-7, seven, seven days a week and twice on Sunday. We all know it. We've already seen it. And if this was Uncle Trump's administration where they found that cocaine in the White House, oh, that, they, they would have been doing the exact same thing. 24-7, seven, seven days a week and twice on Sunday. How, how, how could the Trump administration, oh, you know? It, it, it would be aired all day, every day. It would be a totally different story. They would be going after this man left, right, up, down, and center. They don't even talk about it pretty much anymore. They had their little moment where they discussed it because they had to. It was big news. It was all over social media. They couldn't ignore that. Right? That would have been that would have just been way too obvious that they were biased. Way, way too obvious. They don't really talk about it too much anymore. And we still allegedly haven't found who did it. So why aren't we discussing it? We would have if, if Uncle Trump was in office. So any, to any, any and all Democrats watching, I ask you, why do you think there's such a difference? I'll leave it at that. Peace and love. I'm out.